Hello. On today's video, I will show you a classic retro handheld that you can still find on sale. It was pretty popular, especially at the beginning of the 90s. And I will show you more uh, details about it. And uh, I will also tell you part of what I remember about its uh, popularity. All right. So, first of all, uh, let me present you this uh, device. As you can see, it's uh, a classical uh, plastic uh, cased uh, handheld. Uh, it's not overly, mm, let's say, high quality made. Uh, the case is not fabulous by any stretch of the imagination. It's also quite a cheap uh, console. I mean, for around five to seven. Uh, uh, dollars or euros, you can't have too many complaints about it. Uh, you can see already some, um, let's say, issues with uh, moldings near uh, this area. However, uh, um, it's not an overly bad build design, it's just that it uh, feels uh, quite uh, cheap, which again is not something particularly bad. Again, we have to consider the price. I'm using mixed batteries over here because I don't care too much about the uh, state of the system itself and also about the batteries. There are just some batteries that I have been using on other devices. Uh, so uh, I don't see a large problem with it. Alright, um, now let me tell you something about uh, the console itself. Uh, you oh, you noticed over here the term big game. Uh, this was mostly as an attempt to cover for any copyright uh, infringements uh, in the early 90s. You have to understand the fact that obviously what you're looking at over here is um, first of all a clone of uh, Tetris. But of course, let me start the device because ultimately this is what you want to see. Uh, you have already noticed the um, numbering over here, 9,999 9, games in one. Uh, of course, this is quite a stretch of, an ima of uh, the imagination, because there are obviously not as many games. Uh, there are mostly variations of it. But let me cover, first of all, why uh, this console has been quite popular and, of course, what it was all about. In the second half of the 80s, a very popular game of Tetris was developed in Russia. It created quite a stir, not only in uh, Russia, but uh, in the Western world as well, particularly in America, because uh, there were many uh, persons that had the necessary income and were very much into games. And of course, uh, you have to understand the environment a bit. Uh, in the second half of the 80s, people were already quite accustomed to uh, games on uh, large consoles that could be played in various uh, venues. And uh, games such as uh, Pong, Galaxians were quite popular. Um, and this meant that, uh, obviously, there was a large interest in a, in a puzzle game that was actually quite well developed. However, as is in most uh, situations, uh, there was a large interest in also having uh, game consoles. And uh, the most obvious choice for, of course, the ones that could afford, was to have um, a Nintendo Game Boy. Of course, they were quite pricey, and you wouldn't buy such a console for uh, that. And especially, they weren't available up until um, late uh, 80s in uh, in large numbers. So you have to think about uh, the early 90s as being the point at which the issue of uh, mobile gaming really started. However, you have to think about some very interesting uh, aspects like um, how those games grew to so much uh, popularity. And um, I mentioned um, the, the Game Boy handheld. 
It was released in 1989. Obviously, very few people at that time could afford such a system. So this is why I think that the portable uh, gaming console market was really started in the 90s. And before we had Game & Watch cheaper devices that obviously had some very simple games. So a puzzle game like this was not um, as uh, easily built back then. However, there was a large interest in Tetris, and this meant that uh, many persons ultimately wanted to play such a game. And of course, uh, Nintendo and Nintendo um, Entertainment System Famiclones, as we generally uh, call them, were quite popular at the beginning of uh, the 90s and were one of, the, one of the many ways in which you could have uh, affordable entertainment in parts of the world that didn't have the necessary income to have such games. But ultimately, this meant that there was also uh, a market not only for home consoles, but also for handheld consoles. And in China at the beginning of the 90s, and especially in Hong Kong, because Hong Kong was a place where most of the... Um, electronics manufacturing was done back then, uh, was a very prolific area for trying to find a solution for um, affordable entertainment. And I think that those brick games or Tetris clones were the perfect uh, answer for that. First of all, let me tell you a bit about uh, the specifications of the screen, because you have already seen it quite a lot uh, during this time. It's a 20 rows by 10 columns. This is precisely the amount of columns and rows that was used in the Tetris game. So you are looking at a handheld um, console that was ultimately created particularly for playing Tetris. And this is how most of these consoles came to be. They were Tetris uh, mobile gaming devices. And they were quite successful at that. Uh, I can tell you exactly how much they cost back then, but of course I don't expect them to, to cost uh, uh, that much. Of course they were slightly more expensive than Game & Watch clones that you could buy just about anywhere and probably were running back then uh, at a price of uh, less than $10. So such a handheld console probably was around a similar uh, price, not immediately, but as time uh, went on and probably we get uh, closer to 1993-1994 when they were becoming uh, quite affordable and they were quite popular um, not in America particularly but in Europe and especially uh, in uh, the Central Eastern Europe they were uh, quite popular devices because uh, Nintendo Game Boys were, uh, were very expensive so uh, this was quite a good entertainment that you could take with you just about anywhere. Um, I mentioned uh, the fact that the game was mainly centered on Tetris. As time went on, there were variations. And um, not only one game, but two games and later up to eight uh, or ten games were uh, bundled uh, on the system as uh, technology improved. But I have to say that the Tetris game was clearly the most popular one, no matter what happened. It's quite addictive in many ways. Uh, for such a simple game, it's quite uh, intriguing because you it's ultimately a puzzle game that you have to think about how um, to better handle it. And um, the randomness of uh, puzzle pieces, of actually bricks that come, uh, create an environment that um, puts you quite on a, on a test of uh, quick decision making. But I think I rambled um, enough about uh, what uh, you can um, quite do with a Tetris game. And um, what I wanted to also mention was the fact that more games were bundled. Of course, uh, they were limited by the screen and uh, the most important giveaway is that all these screens that were manufactured um, 20 years ago, or I can say even 30 years ago, because we are clearly past the point of uh, just 25 years since uh, the first uh, uh, such uh, handheld consoles were on the market, 
uh, are very similar. They have the same screen, the same number of rows and columns, and uh, they work just similarly. Of course, they, they do not cater very well to more complex um, games like uh, arcade games, shooters, and others. And also is the fact that uh, this console stands uh, somewhere on the low end, as uh, we can see for today, because... Um, um, Neto Nintendo Entertainment System console uh, games are getting cheaper and cheaper due to the displays and they are still very popular on the Chinese market and also all around the world, especially for very uh, inexpensive uh, entertainment for uh, uh, children or for persons that uh, are uh, looking for um, a quick uh, diversion from, I don't know, mobile phone games or uh, they just want to, to have such an experience. So ultimately there is still a market for these devices but they are uh, ultimately uh, very, um, let's say, limited in their potential compared with other options on the market. So um, let me show you a bit uh, these games. I will start by showing the Tetris game that I think is the centerpiece and the, the device handle is, handle is um, pretty well in, uh, in this instance because everything is optimized for such a situation. Of course, I have to say that the upper button is not used. It can be used in certain games, but ultimately the, the classic Tetris game only requires the left, right and down uh, arrow movement and the rotate uh, function. Alright, so um, a bit about the naming. If uh, we are looking over here, it's quite, um, let's say, not readily obvious how it works. You have um, a number um, on the lower side of the screen and you have a letter. The letter, as far as I can tell, um, shows about the type of game you, you want to play. And I will show you a better uh, view of the screen, hopefully. Yes, I think this one works quite well. Um, so the first one is the game type and the other, the, um, the number you see over here, is for the game's variation. In some cases, I think it's the speed or the complexity at which the game starts. It doesn't matter too much because ultimately when you start the game, I think you are most interested in the type of game rather than the other um, capability you see over here. Alright, so, uh, Tetris, you have to go to L. So you press the rotate button until you reach L. As you can see over here, because there is a difference between this console and the uh, previous generation ones, the first ones that were available almost 30 years ago, um, did not show uh, a demo of the game, so you had to know exactly what game you wanted to run. However, when newer games appeared with these monikers like 999 or 9099 uh, games in one, um, the technology allowed for um, an easier uh, display of a uh, demonstration of a specific game. So ultimately, this is what we are seeing over here. So the Tetris one is the first one. Uh, the next one, I think in terms of popularity, though um, it's debatable, is, let me see, I think I jumped a bit, but it doesn't matter. Let's take them all one by one. I think this one is mostly a tank battle clone. I'm not entirely sure if Battle City or whatever, um, let's say, game they tried to emulate over here. Next, um, you can think of it as a breakout clone. I'm not entirely sure if that's the right way to consider it, but as you can see, it's the classic um, paddle and um, ball game that uh, has to um, smash through a specific wall that is on the upper side of the screen. It's quite an okay game for such a low resolution device, so that's not a problem. Then uh, you can see the 
Galaxians clone, I think. It's quite an okay game to play again on such a screen. Uh, you go left to right and shoot some projectiles that try to, to destroy the enemy the enemies that are on the upper side of the screen and they shoot at you, of course, some projectiles as well. Next, variations. I cannot tell exactly how you can describe such a game. This is one of the racing games. Uh, it's quite okay if you think for a bit, but uh, since um, the resolution is quite small, you don't have a lot of um, side movement and it's quite boring. So actually, it's not such a great game, if you think of it. Another variation of a racing game. Over here, uh, the layout of the track changes slightly, so in some ways it's a bit more um, demanding. Another breakout uh, clone, but this time it's something uh, in between a breakout clone and um, I don't know, a tank game. It's quite difficult to, to describe. Again, variations. Uh, the classical snake game. I think this one was the second most popular game and it was especially popular with uh, mobile phones uh, in um, in the mid to late uh, 90s. So I think it was quite a successful game. And again, one that works very well with such a low resolution screen. And let me see. I think, yes, I think this just about covers it. Let's start the game. And I'm going to start with this one so that it, I make it easier to, to focus on Tetris next. All right, so... Uh, okay, yes. You move, it's quite difficult to play the game because I have to look at the device from quite a distance, but ultimately, yeah, I, I already messed up. Let me see, I think this one is quite, yeah, this one is in focus. So let me start. I'm not going to make an attempt at playing the game seriously. Yeah. It's very difficult to play from this position. Uh, but ultimately, I think you got a grasp of what the game is all about. So let me... Yes, I think this one is a better focusing. So I'm going to make another attempt so that you can see readily the screen's quality. I think it's quite fine. Um, you don't have to expect too much. It's ultimately um, a passive matrix uh, LCD screen. It works quite fine for what it is. So I'm going to give it that. Um, as time went on, of course, um, the device was able to have slightly better uh, um, battery endurance because uh, the chip itself was designed much more efficiently. It's ultimately a system on a chip, so you don't have to expect too much regarding performance or uh, capabilities, and especially so since I already mentioned the fact that uh, no major improvement is being done in this uh, area, because uh, the consoles are ultimately just a very um, cheap, low-end uh, gaming solution. All right, so let me go and start another game. I think the best one would be uh, Tetris. So I will start with that. It's E. Uh, I, sorry. All right, let's start the game. Start pause. Uh, oh, it's a different game to the one I was expecting. Yeah, so over here I think it's somewhat of a reverse Tetris game. You have to uh, shoot some projectiles or some bricks and then you have to create lines. It's somewhat similar to, to the classic uh, Tetris game, though I'm not uh, too fond of it. So let me see. Yes, uh, it's I. I should have uh, started the L game. My mistake, sorry. 
let's start. This one is the classical Tetris game that you all know all too well. Um, you, as you can readily see, ah, uh, yes, I have placed it wrongly. It doesn't matter. I'm not going to play too much this uh, game. You know it all too well. You have to create. Yes, it's horrible. Um, let me make another attempt at starting the game and hopefully I will be able to at least play until uh, I will be able to make a line or to score a line to be more precise. Okay, so something like this. Yes, ah, missed it already. Since I have to look At quite an angle, it's slightly difficult to place uh, to play the game and place the bricks just well. The game itself is not overly complex, but of course, as um, time goes on and you get more uh, the hang of it, you will probably enjoy, but you will also make uh, certain mistakes because um, you may estimate some um, pieces to be coming because uh, they have not done so for a while and I think that the biggest um, such mistake you can have is waiting so much for uh, a line and um, trying to attempt to make your entire uh, configuration uh, suitable for that and you find out that the line is not going to come and then you have to struggle and find other pieces that create the effect you, you desire. At least in the case of my uh, style of planning, uh, this is quite uh, common. Yeah, I think you get the hang of it, so this is ultimately what you can expect with uh, Tetris. All right, um, let me show you another game. Um, the breakout clone, yes, I think this one should be the next. Of course, you also have sound, but it's an obnoxious uh, PC speaker sound. So you're not going to have too much time to enjoy. And it also uses the battery quite fiercely, so I'm not going to use it as such uh, so the breakout sorry i went a bit okay stop pause uh, yes it doesn't matter too much how you are seeing the display what is the pattern ultimately it's the same game you know all too well the breakout clone it works quite fine. Um, I should have mentioned a bit about uh, the buttons. They are um, somewhat comfortable. They are a bit, uh, let's say, uh, elastic to say the least. So the, uh, the feel you have is not that great. And of course, the fact that the, the plastic molding is not of a high quality feels that um, there is a bit of leeway and uh, you may not uh, have the precise um, feeling when you press down the button, but ultimately it's not bad. Again, we are talking about very cheap devices, so you don't have to have uh, your hopes um, high for this uh, instance. I think it works quite fine as, it, as it is. Of course, more demanding uh, players may feel that uh, it's uh, downright annoying but ultimately this is how uh, we see things all right let's move on to the next uh, game i think you got the hang of it uh, let me see yes the galaxians clone mm, okay i think this one is Uh, not really. Or well, I'm not 
I have not found out how. No, I still think this wasn't quite the game I was uh, expecting. Let me see if I can um, find what kind of... Uh, so I attempted the D one. But something... I don't quite ex understand why. Yes, I cannot shoot. Oh, I, sh I can shoot. I can shoot, but I uh, I do not see the projectiles. I think this is the, the, the biggest uh, issue I'm having. Yeah, ultimately, you can play the game quite decently, I would say. All right. Yeah, so that's the game. You don't have quite... Uh, let's say... Um, a major challenge on this game. I think it's okay to waste some time, but it's not really that engaging. Let's see the next one. Uh, the Racing Game Clone. I think this one is similar to the Donkey one that you could play on the first IBM computers. You don't uh, have to have too high expectations. Let me see. So, uh, it's the one at F. This is the one. You don't see the donkey over here. I think you can readily understand that the donkey probably is just your other... Yeah, haven't played it fine. I just uh, hit one of the other cons. Alright. It's more like uh, an obstacle race. It's nothing special. It's not great. There were variations of the game that did not have that many um, obstacles around and this meant that the game was somewhat more enjoyable, but I think that this game is a clear pass for me. Not in a good sense, obviously. Let's see, do we have uh, some interesting variations on this or not? As far as I can tell, I'm not entirely sure if there is a meaningful difference between those. We can make an attempt. Oh, yes. Uh, so you have to play it on the reverse. Yeah, not great. All right. So there are variations. I'm not going to get into them. I'm not really that interested. But I wanted to show what kind of games you can uh, expect. So let's reset it to the first one. Of course, it's quite annoying because uh, you either have to go upper or lower and you don't know exactly what you're going to get. Do not have the uh, expectation of uh, reading somewhere what are all these variations. So um, if you can spend the time and just try and see what each of them comes down to, then it's fine. Otherwise, no. All right. Uh, next game style, I think, is this one. You have a bit of a variation of uh, the track layout, so at least there is um, some, let's say, slight challenge to it. It's not bad. To me, it seems kind of boring. Again, I think that the, the screen size is the main culprit over here, because you don't have enough uh, pixels to draw something that is um, any more meaningful. So it's just entirely, let's say, a single player game with no artificial intelligence uh, competition, nothing else. Yeah, it's boring. But you can waste some time, you no problem. All right. The next game. Um, Yes, there was the, the breakout clone, a different breakout clone I already shown to you. That was uh, the one where you could also um, shoot projectiles and the snake one. Yeah, so I think I covered most of what I had in mind. Ultimately, you may be wondering if such a device is worth it. I still think it is worth it. Um, 
Ultimately, you don't have to have too high expectations. It's a cheap device. It's a handheld one. The plastic molding quality is quite bad, but I think it can still survive some uh, some shocks. So I have to give it uh, to them for designing it uh, quite well. Uh, the speaker is just annoying. It was annoying even on the older one, so there, there is no mistake um, over here. Or at least nothing special about it. Of course, it doesn't have 999 games. There were many variations being done and you can find them in just about uh, any case in color, but they still have the same layout. Um, the screen, yes, it's quite difficult. I think that the first uh, screens have had slightly uh, better contrast. Those ones seem to be having an even... I, what, how should I say it? It has a slightly lower quality um, front, um, front uh, plastic layer. So I don't think it looks as nice as some of the older devices, but um, I don't have to say that it's uh, bad either. If you look closely on the screen, and I will show you that as well, hopefully we can get it in focus, you can even spot a slight um, defect over here. I'm not entirely sure if it comes from the screen or from one of the layers that, um, let's say, are part of the screen, but as you can see, it's not something like um, dirt, it's uh, beneath the, the front layers. Overall, it doesn't have too bad of a contrast and you can quite easily play it uh, outside. But I don't feel that the, the LCD display has um, quite a good uh, quality. It's decent, again, I'm saying, you have to think again. It's a less than uh, $7 or euros device. What more you can expect? So I think this just about uh, covers it. If it's good or not, yes, I think it's good, especially if you had the experience of um, playing with such devices um, in the first uh, half of the 90s or even later. I think they are very nice. Uh, they are also a good um, uh, purchase for uh, children because they can have some... Uh, they can have an engaging uh, game to, to play without any bother about uh, the price of the device. And it's a novelty item, especially for them. So I can I can have too many complaints. Unfortunately, yes, it's a game that, sti that stayed uh, largely the same. It's still manufactured in uh, China. There is no surprise. I would have liked to, to see more innovation in it, um, have a larger uh, screen, uh, have a color screen. Why not? There are so many options that I think were left on the table and still uh, we are um, coping with the same um, retro console um, that still resembles very much the initial uh, devices. It's not bad in itself, but again, my only uh, concern is that I, I wished for some uh, more um, uh, variation. Okay, so I think that just about uh, concludes uh, this review. So I think it's a recommendation if you would like to see such old devices as a curiosity or um, let's say as a memory recollection, as a walk down the memory lane. Uh, it doesn't, um, let's say, use up too much the battery. So if you have some available, you're not going to uh, have any sort of um, disappointment. But ultimately, it's not a device that uh, has a uh, very large potential. I still think that the portable uh, Nintendo Entertainment System uh, clone is much more viable in this sense. And it's just a bit uh, more expensive, but of course it's much more uh, engaging in many ways. However, this one I feel, I still think it uh, has its charm for uh, any person, especially as a, as a novel device, as a curiosity that of course doesn't take too much space. And it's much better in many ways than um, the typical uh, uh, cheap game and watch uh, systems or uh, other devices. So I think that's just about, just about wraps it up. I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you very much for, uh, for watching. Please subscribe to the channel and uh, I hope you will see much more interesting videos 
in the future as well. Thank you very much.